check, check. The agnostic ape autoerotically asphyxiated amidst anal annihilation. So we are doing sound testing on the latest iteration of the 556 Southpaw steel silencer. We always do comparative testing because capturing sound is rather arbitrary. It's something that is always changing. Anytime I see anything online that says, hey, this silencer is 134 dB, 136, 137. Well, first question is, where are you? Are you on the moon, Mars, Texas, Africa? The environment, elevation, humidity, everything has an impact. I've had cans at this range on the same day between morning and afternoon vary three decibels. Same can, same setup, same lot of ammo. So if you sound test a can on one day and then you sound test a different can on the other day, those values are pretty meaningless compared to one another unless you're directly comparing them all the time. So know that the M4 2000 is a wonderful silencer and it's I think the quietest one we have. So it is our baseline. We always compare to it. We see where we fluctuate. As I iterate, I try to compare the cans to themselves or the previous version with what I iterated to make sure that any improvements I make actually make improvements or what changes I'm actually getting. Because if I shot a can and left it and went and shot the other one, data is pretty much useless. All right, so the first thing we're doing here is uh, baselining the M4 2000. It's a very good silencer. It's very quiet. So it's what we always compare everything to, to get a consistent reference to something that's always the same because the sound won't be the same, but the can is. So the comparison gets you relative data. All right, going hot. One thirty-five. One thirty-five. It's around one forty, one thirty-nine, one thirty-eight, one thirty-five, one thirty-five. Yeah, M four in this region, in this temperature. One thirty-five is the lower end of what I see, and then seeing the M four go as high as a. 139.5 average, which is why if you're looking at people's websites and people always ask us how, how, why, why come, why come, you know, give sound? Well, if we just drop a number on our website and then you compare that with a number on another website, it doesn't mean shit. If one says 134 and one says 136. That doesn't mean the 134 is quieter. It just means it was tested on a different day. If you compare them side by side, then you're getting more accurate data. But since the SDs are so variable, depending on ammo, setup, load, did the 134 silencer get shot on a 16 inch fix or a 13 inch sugar weasel? Did the other one get shot on the same system, same ammo? So we don't give numbers because it's misleading. Is that new new? Data file stored. Okay. Going hot. 146. 145. 144. 141. 143. If you're looking on the market and you're trying to pick a silencer, I know it's nice and it be perfect in a perfect world to look at it like an iPhone where you just compare that to a Samsung you can look at all the specs and it's facts but with sound it isn't that simple so we don't give numbers because you're just going to compare that to another number and unless those are all compared in the same test it's meaningless 
Also, you could just compare numbers, but there's other factors. I've seen some cans out there that I'm already quieter than that are 24 ounces. If you give me 24 ounces of material to work with, I will make you the quietest fucking can on the market. But there's a lot of factors to can. What's its function? What's it for? How does that play in? Do you want the quietest thing? Do you want the lightest thing? We try to create the balance of both. If you just want the quietest thing, then yeah. Buy a heavy ass, giant ass can. We can make a can. We can fill all the volume you want, but you're just gonna pay for it in weight and length. So there's too many factors to just put some numbers on a website to try and validate what we do. 146, 142, 139, 146. Did I load five or am I stupid? Can be both. One forty one, one thirty eight, one thirty nine, one thirty eight, one thirty six. Higher than the M4, but not bad for a jet cut iteration can. And now I want to compare it to the thing I made before it that has more volume, but is potentially louder based on data that isn't relative to one another. Generally, you would think that volume is beneficial, but the thing about silencers is it's all made up and the points don't matter. All right, going hot. Safety off helps. 142, 138, 139, 139, 137. It's a little bit louder, but we're taking five shot samples and our SDs are high, so statistically, when you measure a lot of these things that are close, the averages are different, but the SDs allow them all to like overlap in one band. You have outliers on either end that are either wildly quiet or loud, but without taking a metric fuck ton of data, it's hard to really narrow that data down. This is the quietest thing I've made thus far, or, one of them, I actually, I don't know if we should put this in the video. I actually exploded the quietest thing I made thus far because ran it into the ground, but I learned from it and I changed the part. So now it's stronger and that won't happen. 141, 139, 137. 137, 137. So, that was the quietest, most consistent one. Wasn't that quiet today. Let these cool for a little bit and then we'll do another cycle. Always check your guns before you go to the range because my bolt catch is missing. 138, 141, 136, 137, 141. 20, 20 minute difference, 30 minute difference and the numbers are much different. Yeah, that's why it's, you need a metric fuck ton of data to start actually getting good statistical 
analysis, but in iteration, when you're doing quick and small changes, it is a good quick and dirty test to see quickly if you're in the ballpark or not, because there's no point setting up an aggressive shooting schedule and going out shooting all the shit if it's going to be like a 155 decibel can you'll know right away whether or not it's in the ballpark or if it's close and then if you really want to get comparative data you can start going down that path but it saves some time you weld up a can make some changes sometimes they work sometimes they don't Iterate, iterate, iterate. One hot, back to the newest iteration. Ding! Going hot. One forty three. Cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. 140. Rinse dry, repeat. 136. 136. Last one of the day. One forty one. One thirty eight. One thirty seven. One forty. One thirty nine. Hot potato. Turns out that the only difference between that and that, because all the spacing is the same, is that last baffle's shorter. Mm -hmm. So it's less volume, but it's quieter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, volume isn't always the thing. You have these guidelines you try to follow of volume's good, giant jet cut's bad, and but it's not always true. So you test the things and you learn. But like I said, you can hedge your bets best way to do that is to talk to somebody like Ethan Lassard who's been designing silencers for a long time because it could save you a whole lot of time from doing stupid shit and say no I tried that and it didn't work. I took a step back from my simulation can that I was trying to simulate what this would be like. Apparently my simulation was uh, the theoretical was greater than the actual. Um, so what are you gonna do moving forward? Uh, so I have end caps that don't have a baffle that are also pretty similar. So I think I'm going to go back to this with the Inconel end cap and Inconel blast baffle. See where we're at there. And then I might make a can that doesn't have either of the end caps. It still has the old end cap because that's tried and true and that's what I've been testing is the pork chop end cap with a smaller hole just to take that variable out so then I could shoot something essentially the exact same as something I've already made same jet cuts baffle spacing everything the only thing that would be different is the um, blast baffle because right now I have two variables so I don't necessarily know what changed I took a leap and took a guess and it's not as good as I'd like it to be. So either keep taking leaps and guesses or you get a little more strategic with it. You try to isolate what's hurting and what's helping mm -hmm. and then try to combine all the things that are helping and mitigate the things that are hurting. So could be the end cabaffle, could be the blast baffle, but they're 
both new additions, so <coughs> I can try to isolate them. Cool. All right. We're out.